he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. Bless the Lord, O my soul. All that's within me, bless his holy name. The Lord is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. Anybody going to help me praise the Lord today? Amen. The Bible says, make a shout unto the Lord. In fact, Psalm 47 says, oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout to the Lord with the voice of triumph. And if you're here and you're alive, you are more than conquerors through Christ. Christ has strengthened us. Christ has enabled us to come to the house of prayer. Christ has enabled us even to stand on our feet. We thank God for his, his wonderful strength. We thank God for his enabling power. Amen. Amen. Let's bless the Lord. Let's go to God in prayer. Our Father and our Lord, our Savior, we thank you for one more day. Thank you, Lord, for your many, many blessings. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for preserving us. Thank you for, Lord, waking us up this morning and giving us traveling grace to come to the house of prayer. Lord, we thank you for one more day that it's not because we're so smart or so talented or even worthy, Lord, but it is because of your grace and your mercy. It is because you have smiled on us. Ask now in the name of Jesus that you would, you would just come into our midst, Lord, and dwell in our hearts and fix what's wrong and make us righteous, Lord. Help us to live holy. Help us to be light shining in a dark world. Help us not be ashamed or embarrassed to tell somebody Jesus saves. Thank you, for Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If I had 10,000 tongues, they would not be enough to tell you thank you. So, God, we bless your name this day. We lift you up because you're worthy to be praised. Keep us now. Guide us as we worship you, as we give praise to you, as we proclaim your word. Keep us and strengthen us. We ask it now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And praise God. Amen. Bless the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. For those of you that are listening to us by streaming, we thank God for your being tuned in this morning. Amen. For truly, this is the day that we can worship, praise, and celebrate the Lord. My name is Pastor Solomon Fields of the St. John Baptist Church in the city of Lubbock, Texas. And we thank God for you being who you are and where you are. And we pray that this word, that these songs of praise will minister to your heart and encourage you not only this day, but for the rest of this week. Amen? Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. We're going to ask our worship leader, Brother Michael Connor, he will come now and give us songs of praise. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise this, this morning. We're glad that you're joining us with us on this live. And we just come to give God praise and glory. And we just want to enter God into this place. We want to welcome in this place. For he has done many and mighty things for us. And we should be so ever grateful for what he has done in our lives. Oh 
prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Amen. Amen. Okay, so November the 7th, that Saturday, we're going to have a family dinner out. We're going to meet at Golden Corral at 5 o'clock. If anybody would like to go, you would have to pay for your own meal. Okay, Sunday morning, November the 8th, we're going to start at 10. And we're asking all the tribe leaders if they can get their teams to wear the color t-shirt of their tribe. And men wear blue jean bottoms, women wear blue jean skirts. And we're only going to have that morning service. Uh, regular service will start at 11.30. And we will have two prizes for the winners, first place and second place. So y'all, work, work, work. <laughs> Let's work together. Amen. 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 We thank Brother and Sister Griffin for informing us about our church anniversary. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Those of you that have already started working for the church anniversary, listen, we want to celebrate. This is actually the 75th year. Amen. That's the kind of excitement we ought to have. This is the 75th year. And yes, we're going to do things a little bit different. Yes, I know about COVID-19. Guess what? We're still going to celebrate the goodness of the Lord. Amen? Amen. We're going to ask our worship leader if he would come again. Give us a selection after which we will come back with a word on this morning. Amen. Bless the Lord.
you have your Bibles, turn with me to the 46th book of the song. One verse. Psalm 46 and 1. God is. I really could stop right there. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you for this privilege just to share from your word. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity just to read your word. Thank you for a mind to understand. And, oh God, open us up and reveal your word to us. Make it alive in us. Make it applicable to our lives and our situations, our circumstances. Help us, Lord, digest your word. Speak to the hurting, speak to the weary, speak to those that are in sorrow. Speak, Lord, by the power of your word, through the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to talk about the God of refuge and strength may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The God of refuge and strength. Many of us have experienced childhood dependencies. Child or grandchild cause of their fears, whatever that may be, maybe nightmares, maybe thunder, maybe lightning. They have run to us. Child may have jumped in your lap. Child may have jumped in your bed. The child needed someone to give them comfort give them a sense of security. And your presence doesn't always stop the trouble. But what it does do is it helps that child overcome their fears and their anxiety in the midst of trouble. Friend, I believe this is what the Lord does for us when we run to Him in the midst of our troubles. I believe that God will be a refuge and a strength. Even if you're going through trouble, trauma, and yes, tragedy. This Psalm 46 encourages the believer to remember several things here about God. First of all, it encourages us to remember that God is our refuge. God is our shelter. God is our protection from danger. God is the one that can comfort us in our distresses. Just thinking about the fact that God is ought to prompt so prompt somebody to just praise him. Oh, maybe I didn't say it the way you ought to hear it. Listen, when you think about God is, God is, is in the present tense, which means here and now. Whatever you're going through, whatever your situation may be, God is a refuge in the midst of that time. Right here and now, he's our refuge, he's our strength, and yes, he's a right now very present help in a time of trouble. The 
historians of our scripture tell us that this song was sung as a praise to God because he is with us. He is what Matthew calls the Emmanuel. He's with us right now. And he is so powerful and he is so wonderful that his miraculous power can preserve us and defend us no matter what the enemy throws at us. Now, now when you really think about how awesome that is, then you can almost look at the devil and tell the devil, bring it on because God is my refuge and my fortress. Martin Luther, when talking with his companion, Philip, they were sad one day, and, and, and Martin Luther told his friend, come, Philip, let us read and let us sing the 46th Psalm. And they sung it a little bit differently. They said, a sure stronghold, our God is he. A timely shield and weapon. He, our help he will be and set us free from every ill that can happen. What Martin Luther and his friend Philip was saying, no matter how sorrowful there may be some times in our life, that God is our refuge. Psalm 46 is a blanket for many types of refuge. And I don't have to go through all of those. Just look at your own life and see where the enemy is attacking you. And then in, insert the fact that God is a refuge. It may be on the job. Some people, well, let's just back up and look at it. Some people today need physical refuge. Yes, yes. They, they need a place of shelter. They need a place to live in. And when you think about what we've heard on the news lately, homes being destroyed because of a, because of fire, for homes being destroyed because of hurricanes and, and all of the hurricanes that are constantly hitting the Louisiana and the Mississippi and the Texas area, when you think of the fact that there are some people that are suffering because of national natural disasters and they are needing a place to put their head down when you put it in that perspective you even think about verse 2 and 3 where the psalmist said therefore we will not fear even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea though its waters roar and be troubled though the mountains shake with swelling the psalmist is saying no matter what happens in our world today on a natural level, God is our refuge. Oh yes, he's a refuge. For some people, it's not just their home. Some people have been homeless for a while and we have labeled them homeless. But I would suggest even for those individuals that God is our refuge. Today, he's not only a physical refuge for some, but he's a refuge for others from simple falsehood. That, that, that's a lot of, uh, if I can put it this way, there's a lot of lying going on these days. I wish I had an amen there, but, but, but look at it from a broader perspective. The deception of pride is actually a lie. The vainglory is actually a falsehood. Some people are drunk with intoxicating drink trying to forget or trying to suppress their real feelings. But guess what? God is still a refuge. Amen. Lord knows we're getting inundated with a lot of political propaganda these days and you don't know what's truth from error. We need a God that's our refuge in times of today. I, I, I believe that's what Isaiah was writing about in chapter 28 verses 1 through 15. Isaiah said, for we have made lies our refuge and under falsehood we have hidden ourselves and it seems like today that it's a pattern for people to lie well, well don't tell them the truth because then it may expose something just lie about it and it seems like we are being inundated and populated with lies and deception and so much falsehood and I suggest to you that it's all rooted from the fact that the devil is the father of lies and he has impregnated man with a lying spirit but to know even in the midst of a lying spirit that God is our refuge Jesus said it this way you know how you
you combat those lying spirits. He said in John 8, 31b, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. Hello, somebody. And the truth shall make you free. So if you want to be free from falsehood, if you want to be free from lies, if you want to be free from the deception of the world, I suggest you abide in the word because in the word, God is, hello somebody, our refuge. Today, people need refuge from not only from the natural disasters and refuge from all the lying and deception, but we just need a bona fide refuge from the enemy. The enemy can come at us in many forms, many shapes, and many fashions. Some of you are still working on jobs and you got co-workers that you have conflict on the job. The enemy doesn't care anything about you getting along with your co-worker. He's just there to kill, steal, and destroy. Am I talking to anybody in here? Some of us have trouble with neighbors in our community. Their lifestyle and their morality, or I should say their lack of morality, causes a conflict and tension in the neighborhood. And that's the attack of the enemy. And I don't know about you, but it's hard to read and study my Bible when next door there's bumpity bump, pootity hooty, and whatever else is going on. But God is still our help me Lord Jesus. Living in a time when there is systematic racism from years of acceptance. Well, that's just the way it is. Years of toleration. Years of what I call demonic motivation by the devil himself. And you need somebody that you can retreat back into in order to survive in the midst of racial injustice. In the midst of all of the pressure that's on us today. Listen, you can't fix morality with another law. You need a God that's a God of refuge. I know some of us are fortunate to have wonderful families, but some of us have noticed that even the enemy can raise its ugly head right in the family. If I had to call a biblical witness, I'd call, come here, David. You have experience with your own son, Absalom. And Absalom tried not only to take the kingdom, but tried to kill his father. The enemy is constantly attacking us, and David said, I had to run for my life because my enemies were after me. But David writes to us, God is a refuge. Maybe you haven't had to run for your life. Bless the Lord. But I like the way the psalmist says in 34, 17, he said, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them and delivers them out of all their trouble. Oh my God, isn't that good news to somebody to know that all situation and circumstances have gotten so bad that you've tried to turn to the left or turn to the right and you haven't gotten an answer yet. But I recommend that you call on the Lord. Cry out to the Lord. The Bible says he delivers them. In fact, in verse 19, he said, many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. That's mighty good news to know that he's such a God of protection. He's such a God of shelter. He's such a God of refuge that no matter what you are in or what you encounter in this world, you can hide in the Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Psalmist in book 37, after encouraging us not to fret about those evildoers, he wrote in verse 39 and 40, but the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And I'm about ready to get to my next point here, church, but I'm so thankful that God is present tense a refuge. Our refuge is not in armies. Our refuge is not in impregnable fortresses. Our refuge is not in living behind gates of iron. Our refuge is not in burglar bars and alarm systems. Our refuge is not in panic rooms, but our refuge is in 
in God. Maybe I need to say it bluntly for somebody. I know you pack your gun, but listen, you ought to pack Jesus. Because Jesus can deal with what the gun can't deal with. Jesus can deal with what the knife cannot deal with. God is our refuge. He's a refuge for the oppressed and he's a stronghold in times of trouble. Anybody oppressed? I, I know sometimes it's kind of embarrassing us for to admit that we're in trouble. But is there anybody that's in trouble? I, I'm not ashamed that there have been some times in my life that I have been in trouble. I'm not talking about trouble with the law because I broke the law. I'm talking about trouble because the enemy has tried to ambush me. I'm talking about trouble because someone has lied on me. I'm talking about trouble because I've been inflicted with disease and pain. And in those times, I'm saying God is yes, our refuge. And this text teaches us a second point. We need to know that God is our strength. Oh my God. God is our strength. He has the quality. He has the state, I call it, of strong. In the song of Moses recorded in Exodus chapter 15, he praised God. He said, you God have guided them in your strength to your holy habitation. This song of Moses was after God had delivered them from Egyptian bondage. After God had allowed them to cross over the Red Sea. The strength of God was shown in the ten plagues in Egypt. Uh -huh. oh, I wish I had some Bible reads in here. The strength of God was witnessed in that pillar, that cloud, and that, that fire by day and the pillar of cloud. The, the strength of God was seen in how he positioned himself between, between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of the Israelites. The strength of God that he could provide darkness for the Egyptians and light for the Israelites. Oh my God, that's almost a place I need to put my homiletical kickstand down because he can put darkness in the life of your enemy and show sunshine in your life. He is a God of strength. The unmatched strength of God was manifest in even his opening of the Red Sea for the Egyptians to, for the Egyptians to drown, but the Israelites to cross over on dry ground. Friend, that is a state of being strong. That is a character. That is a quality. That is an attribute of God that God is our strength. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Well, church, that's, that's, that's a lot of good historical information to know about God. Somebody, you ought to know that God is your strength. Yeah. There ought to be somebody here that has a personal testimony that you can say, when I was weak, he was strong. You may not have a testimony like the children of Israel, but can you remember some times when you wanted to give up? Talk to me if you can. Can you remember some times when you wanted to throw in the towel? Maybe I need to be transparent here. There are times that I really want to say, take this job and shove it. Y'all don't talk like that. Y'all more spiritual than I am. But there have been some times that I've said, if they say one more thing to me, I'm going off on them. But some way, somehow, God strengthens me. To endure that when I thought I was at my breaking point, it was the strength of God that gave me strength. When I said I couldn't take another step for the Lord, it was the strength of God that enabled me to walk in His truth and His righteousness. The psalmist says here, and he testifies in book 18, 1 and 2, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength. He keeps telling us that God is his strength. The Lord delivered David from the hand of King Saul and even the hand of the Philistines, his enemy. It was not David's abilities. It was not because David was so skilled with a slingshot that he was able to kill Goliath. It was the strength of the Lord. Yes. 
If the Lord so chooses to deliver us from our enemy. Hello, somebody. Don't you dare take credit for it. It is because of the Lord's strength. Lord, yes. Psalms 28 and 7 said, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song, I will praise him. I'll praise him, not because I was able to do it, but I will praise him because he smiled on me and strengthened me for the task. If the Lord enables us for any task, it is because of his strength. It is his strength that, are y'all getting what I'm saying? It's his strength. It's not because of your intellectual abilities. It's not because of your skills or talent. It is because of the strength of the Lord. So the Paul who sat at the foot of Gamaliel, the Paul who was a Hebrew after the Hebrew, the Paul who wrote most of the New Testament, about 13, 14 books, this Paul says, I can do all things through Christ. That strengthens me. And friend, in the times that we live in and what's occurring in our world, it's enough to make a person weep and mourn. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? If you're watching the news and you're going through life and you're seeing what I'm seeing, it's enough to make you want to just throw and just throw your hands up. I told my wife one time, can I be transparent? I say, I wish sometimes we could just pack up and move out to nowhere. It's crazy around here. But then I got the reading in the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah encouraged the people after they had heard the word of the Lord. The people heard the word of the Lord and the people went to weeping and mourning. They began to cry over what the word revealed that was sinful in their life. And then I had to do like the people. I had to grab a hold to myself because I kept on reading and I got down to Nehemiah 8 and 10 and he said, do not sorrow for the joy of the Lord is your strength. My, 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 the reason I'm gone is not because of my strength. It's because God is my strength. And Nehemiah said, it's the joy of the Lord. Now somebody missed that because you may be in a situation where you have no joy. But it's not your joy he's talking about. It's the joy of the Lord. And remember who's got joy now. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father full of grace and truth. And he's interceding for us. So since God's son Jesus has the joy, draw your strength from Jesus himself. The Lord is our strength. He's our refuge. He's our strength. I've got one more. He is a very present help in trouble. Anybody in trouble? God literally is abundantly available. There is no time in which God is not available. Oh my God. Did anybody grasp that? I've gone to the doctor and found out that the doctor had an emergency at the hospital so they had to reschedule my boy. Anybody been there? Anybody called somebody, called a company up and you got an answering machine? I even called the doctor's office and they told me they were at lunch. Call back at one o'clock. Listen, but God is abundantly available. So that means all you got to do is dial one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost. All you got to do is call him and he is available. Moses wrote in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 7 about the nearness of God. And I, I, I really like that to think that God is so near to us. Deuteronomy 4 and 7 says, For what great nation is there that has God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us? For whatever reason we may call upon him. Doesn't that put juice in your step to know that God is so close by? that all you need to do is call him. The psalmist says in 145, 18, the Lord is near to all who call 
upon him to all who call upon him in truth. Now don't come shaking and faking with the Lord. Don't come trying to run your game on the Lord, but be truthful with the Lord. Lord, I'm your creature. I'm your child. I need help. He's abundantly available. When the psalmist wrote, God is a very present help in trouble, I thought about things that cause us pain. Anybody got some pain going on? You might as well be honest about it. God knows you anyway. Oh, I, I, I know I ought not to bring this up, but God even knows the number of hairs on your head. So he already knows whether or not you are in distress. He already knows whether or not you are suffering. He already knows about the calamity in your life. And the time that we're living in, sin generates misery. Sin generates trouble. And it's good to know that God is present when we are confronted with misery and trouble. Can I get an amen right there? I don't know what you're going through, but I got some good news. God is a very present help. It may be in the home, it may be on the job, it may be in the schoolroom, it may be in the community, wherever it may be. It's good news to know that God is a very present help in a time of trouble. He inspired Isaiah to write in chapter 41 and 10. He said, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Now that, that verse is pregnant with a whole lot of I wills. Did anybody hear him? The Lord says, I, I, I didn't assign it to somebody, but he said, I am with you, that I am your God, that I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you. God is giving a precious promise that I will be there in the midst of your trouble. Oh yes, Isaiah kept writing book 43 verse 2. He said, when you pass through the water, here we go again, I will be with you. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. One more time, we got a whole lot of I will. God is giving precious promises to us because in the times of the perilous times that we are living in, we will all constantly have trouble in our life. In fact, Jesus said, in this world, ye shall have what? trouble, but be of good cheer. I believe he said what you're going through I've already gone through. I believe whatever misery and trauma you've got in your life, I've already experienced it and I've come out on the other side victorious. Whatever can and will happen in this crazy world, children of God have the assurance that God is a very present help in a time of trouble. Do I have a witness in this house? If anybody had some trouble in your life? I, I'm not talking about, remember, I'm not talking about little things like broke fingernail. No, no, no. I'm talking about some real trouble. Some things that will keep you up at night. And some things that will make you as strong as you think you are. Make you shed some tears. Some things that will give you some headache. I'm talking about some show enough trouble. And I'm telling you that God is a very present help in a time of trouble. Well, let me call a witness here in the book of Matthew chapter 14. Peter, the only disciple that walked on water, got out of the boat and walked on water. And Peter was walking on the water and all of a sudden Peter began to look at his surroundings. And his focus was on what was going on around him and instead of being focused on him who's a very present help in a time of trouble. You know the rest of the story. Peter began to sink, but Peter cried out to the Lord and he said, Lord, save me. And the book said, I like this part, the book says immediately. Yes, I did. 
Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all didn't hear me. I, I say the book says immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him. The only way you can get stretching out a hand to catch somebody, you got to be in that facility, which means that the Lord was a very present help when Peter was drowned. Maybe you're drowning with something. Maybe you're drowning in some situation. But I suggest to you that you remember that he's a very present help. Well, I need to hurry to a close here, but there's a reason sometimes we forget he's a very present help. And I thought I'd illustrate it this way. The sun is a light that shines 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Can I go further? All month long, all year long. The sun never stops shining. But here on earth, it appears dark in places because the earth turns on its and the side facing the sun gets light while the other side gets darkness. Right. Are y'all still with me? What am I saying to us, friend? If there is darkness in your life, it's not because God is unavailable. Oh, yeah, yeah. Somebody, somebody missed that right there. If, if, if there's rain and thunder and lightning and storms in your life, it is not because God is unavailable. It could be because you have turned on your axis away from God. And so what am I saying to us? That God is faithful all of the time. In fact, the book says he's a consistent God. Jeremiah writes in the book of Lamentations that his mercies are new every morning. Oh my God. Every morning you get up, God's got some new mercies that are just lined up for your situation. Jeremiah says, great is thy faithfulness. So the Lord is faithful. The Lord is consistent. And God is always ready to shine in our lives. We just have to make sure we're turned to him. Hello, somebody. Because when we turn in the wrong direction, some of us have turned our backs on God. Some of us have turned our backs on the work of the Lord have turned our back on what God has commissioned us to do. And I submit to you that all you got to do is turn to Jesus. Why Jesus? Because Jesus is the light of the world. And he's constantly shining. He's always available. Oh, I got to quit now. But listen, in the times we live in, we need to know that God is our refuge. Yes, yes. We need to know that God is our strength. Uh -huh. yes, he is. And I don't know about you, but it's comforting to know that God is a very present help yes. in a time of trouble. Yes, yes. I like the way one writer said, God is our all in all. All other shelters, all other protections, are refuges of lies. All other strengths are really temporary and weaknesses. All other power are simply temporary positions of power, but all the power belongs to God. Yes, yes, yes. Is there anybody in here that knows that God is all powerful? Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to take my seat, but is there anybody in here that knows that God is an all-powerful God? Well, he's so powerful that he's able to speak and men live and speak again and men die. He's so powerful that he holds the world in the power of his hand. He's so powerful that he's able to allow 
cruel world and die on the cross. He's so powerful that his son can die on the cross but get up three days later. That's the power of the Lord. Anybody know he's a powerful God? So whatever your situation may be, I leave you with these words of comfort. Be not dismayed. Whatever be tied, God will. I say God will take care of you. Beneath his arms of love abide. God will. Yes, he will take care of you. Anybody know he will? Can you say yes? in the home maybe it's something on the job maybe it's finances whatever it is I believe that if we call on the Lord if we sing his praise God is our refuge it's not about how much money I've got in the bank it's not be totally dependent on you. Help us to, you, to put our all on you, Lord. Thank you for being a God. Thank you for being our Savior. Thank you for your leading. Thank you for your prompting. Now in the name of Jesus that you would print someone's heart change someone's mind encourage someone in the inner man that they would throw their all on you and you alone Lord I thank you your arms are not short Lord, I thank you that there is nothing too hard for God. You're still in the saving business. You're still in the healing business. You're still in the saving of souls. You're still able to rescue us. You're still able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we ask for. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For being the is in our life. Ask now that you would touch hearts and minds. That your word may strengthen and encourage. In the name of Jesus. 
Lord, I thank you. Amen. The invitation to discipleship is available right now. I say the invitation. John writes in the book of Revelation, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. You have to invite the Lord in. Some people will die and spend eternity in the lake of fire because they simply refuse to invite the Lord in. I want him to be Savior and Lord. If that's your desire, this is a good day to give your life to Jesus. This is a good day to say, Lord, I made a mess of it. Come into my life. Be my refuge. Be my strength. And listen. I know a lot of times we say we may not come when you want it. But he's always on time. Do you understand why that's true? Because God, in essence, is outside of time. So when he steps into your time, he's always on time. If you have life, you have health, and you have strength in your body, I encourage you to give yourself to Jesus. We're going to have a song of invitation. I encourage you, if you're listening to us on the live stream, go to our website. Tell us you made a decision for Jesus. We will offer you up to the Lord in prayer that God would feed you and nourish you and strengthen you. We thank God, thank God for those who have asked for prayer. And I need to just tell you outright, I don't believe we have failed to pray for anyone that has contacted us and asked for prayer. I want to be guilty of doing what God did. I can't give you refuge, but I know who can. I can't give you my strength. Mine is limited, but God is not. I may be busy, but I know who's abundantly available. Give your life to Christ and do it today.
glory for the things that he has to do. God is an awesome God. And what uh, the brother was just singing about, God is. You fill in the blank. What is he to you? You fill that in. We praise the Lord for the beautiful message that came from the pastor on today. The God of refuge and strength. And he let us know that God is our refuge. He will keep and protect us. God is our strength. Where we are weak, he will make us strong. And God is a very present help in trouble. He is available at all times. And we praise God that we know that. And we praise God that you have got that message on today. We thank God for all the great things that he has done for us on today. But if you have any prayer requests, we ask you to get those requests into us. And those that see our number going across the screen at this time, let us know that you are in need of prayer. Let us know what you need. We will be there for you. If you have decided to follow Jesus, even because of the message today or some song that was sung on the day, give us a call and let us know. We want to know so that we can call you back and get material to your hands, let you know more about God, and let you go higher in the Lord. We would like to put your name on our board that says the power of prayer. Power of prayer. Jesus is forever powerful. We know that prayer, if we ask anything, God says he will give it and do it for us. So if you have any prayer requests, we or would like to put your name on our board. We would ask you to give, get in contact with us. And we have a board that we will put your name on. And those names are prayed over on a daily basis. And we would like to know that someone that called us today asking for prayer, we want you to know that we will pray for that family. It's a real family. We want to pray for them. And we know, want you to know that we are on it right now. If there are any questions that you may have, something that you're thinking about, something you're not sure about, use our email address and our pastor himself will answer that question for you. We have CDs and DVDs available for you to purchase. They are great tools for you to go stronger and higher in the Lord. So we ask you to request those and we will put those in your hands. A reminder that the 75th church anniversary will be November the 7th and the 8th with the theme, Let's Work Together. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10. Let's work together. We'd like to remind everyone that voting is the election is coming up. Whether you mail in your vote, early vote, or just wait till November the 3rd to vote, we encourage each and every one to vote. Vote, vote, vote. This is a very, very critical election that's coming up. So we ask you to please vote. We want you to know that our pastor, as he feels, has written a book that is entitled The Signs of Jesus' Deity in the Gospel of John. And what a wonderful book this is. The pastor goes down and breaks down the miracles that Jesus did, letting us know that this was Jesus, the Son of the living God. It says all pointing to the fact that, that he was Christ. The manifestation of God in the flesh. The signs of Jesus' deity in the Gospel of John provides a concise resource to for those who minister through and those who are preaching or those who just want to go high in the Lord. You need to get that book in your hands. This is Pastor Appreciation Month. If you don't know what to get your pastor, you can get him that book. It's a great tool. You need it in your hands. Even for the ones that want to go deeper in the Lord, you need to get that book. We, we have it available. You can get it through Amazon. You can get it through Barnes & Noble. You can get it through Archway Publishing. Or you can go on our website and follow the links and you can purchase the book there. Or you can get in contact with the pastor here or someone here that's working with him. We will get that book into your hands. The hardbacks are $33.95 and the soft covers are $16.99. Uh, we're asking all our members to please purchase those books. Even for yourself and even for your loved ones, for your family members that are ministers, preachers, anyone. It would be a blessing to anyone. So we're asking you to do that. We also have our mask available. The adults were $8. The children are $6. We have three types. Prayer still works. SJBC with a cross. And also St. John Baptist Church. Psalms 91 and 4. You can go to our website. Press donate. And then a link for special products will pop up. And you can order those there. Our ministry gift continues to be. Uh, this month. An in-depth study of Ephesians 4. 25 through 32. 
entitled Things That Breathe the Holy Spirit. It is an awesome, awesome, awesome lesson. And it also included in this is two more sermons, The Wise and the Foolish, and also The Tree and Its Fruit. We also have a praise and worship CD that's, that's done by the church musicians, and all the songs are sung by the worship leader, Brother Michael Connors. You know, that ministry gift is $25, and we thank the Lord for those that are calling in and writing. You can go to our website, press donate, and a link will pop up that says Bible Study Products. You can order it there, or you can call us and get in contact with us, and we will get this in your hands. They are going out in different cities, and we thank God for the response, and we want you to keep on, because everyone needs to know how not to grieve the Holy Spirit. If you would just like to, to donate to this ministry, go to our website and follow the links to donate. Be a blessing to this ministry. Help us get the word out. Help us be a blessing to others. We know that you are here, but there's so many out there that has nowhere to go, nowhere to turn at this time. We want to be there for them and we'd like for you to help us put the word of God out. So go to our website and donate. We want to thank you in advance for what you will be doing. We ask you to meet us back here this Wednesday for our midweek service, Bible study. Our pastor will be back and we're asking you, our members, to come out and be with us, even on Bible study night, Sunday mornings, we are here. We are here. And God, most of all, God is here. So meet us here Wednesday at 7 p.m. We are looking forward to another high time in the Lord, another word from God. Thank you for your presence. We want to love you and thank you. And may God bless you. The continuance of this week, may he be forever in your presence. Thank you so much. the Lord. Thank you, Minister Thompson, for those announcements. Have you been blessed today? Amen. Come on, have you been blessed today? Amen. Amen. I want to pause here for just a moment and ask us to go to God in prayer. We've had people that we know have been diagnosed with covid we have people in our congregation that have been diagnosed. We have people that are going through all kinds of suffering and pain. But I believe God is still a God of refuge. I would ask that if you would just stand right where you are. God our Father for those that may be too ill to pray may be in too much pain Lord to pray I ask now in the name of Jesus be who you are be their strength in a time of trouble. We don't know all of the situation. We don't know all the prognosis. We don't know, Lord, but you know. I ask now for your healing touch. I ask, oh God, that you would use your supernatural divine brag about it, Lord, but so that your name will be praised. You will draw somebody to you, Lord, just from healing bodies, just from saving souls, just from changing minds, just because of who you are. Have your way, Lord. We ask now, we thank you 
We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. I don't know who you're going to heal. I don't know how you're going to heal. I don't know what doors you're going to open. I don't know who you're going to bless. But do it in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Now, Lord, as we get ready to leave this place, lead us in a plain path. Our steps, Lord, according to your word. And despite the pressure of the enemy on us, help us to be Christ like. Help us to be light shining in darkness. We ask it in Jesus' name. And we thank you. Amen. And thank you, Lord. Amen. Church, it's offering time. Amen. We're going to do as we have done in on last Sunday. As we leave this service, we're going to lead through the exit to my right that has the exit sign. We ask that you would give your offering and be dismissed. Amen. Just like we would if we were coming around for the offering. Let's start in the rear. The door to my right. And we will be dismissed. Amen. 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 Have you enjoyed the service oh, today? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Have you, come on, y'all not talking to me. Have you enjoyed the service? Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. Have we gotten spoiled by online streaming that we don't want to come to church? No. Amen. You may stand and be dismissed.